Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. Today, I'm proud to announce the beta release of 351 Droid. And this is a version of Android that runs on RG351 devices. So this is going to work on the RG351P, 351M, and 351V. Now this release is built upon Lineage OS, which runs Android 11. And when I say beta release, I definitely mean beta release. There have been some really interesting breakthroughs with this firmware over the past couple months, and we're just about ready for prime time. That being said, there are definitely some bugs involved, and I'll show you those later in the video. But for now, I would consider this an introduction to Android on the RG351 devices. I'll walk you through how to set everything up and talk about some of the potential that I see in this already. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. So first things first, I want to give a shout out to the developers who have been working on this release. 351 Droid is a community driven project, and the main developers have been Turtle, Thor, and No Time to Date. And they've been plugging away at this for the past couple months now. And they set up some support channels here on the Retro Handhelds Discord. If you're not already a member, you can find it at the URL above, and I'll also have links in the video description. In addition, I'll have direct links to the firmware on Google Drive. So once you jump into Google Drive, you'll have two options here, 351P and M, or the RG351V. I'm going to do everything on my RG351P here, so I'm going to download that first one. Now personally, I prefer to unzip my files, so I'm going to extract it here using WinRAR, so I have the original image file. Next, I'm going to use an app called Win32 Disk Imager to flash the image to an SD card. Within here, I'm just going to select that image, and then make sure I have my SD card selected and then just select write. It's gonna ask you, do you really wanna do this? And you say, yeah, man, I wanna do it. And you can use any size SD card you want. I'm gonna use 128 gigs here. And this flashing process is gonna overwrite whatever you have on that SD card. Now, if you're using Windows, as soon as it's done, you're gonna get a ton of pop-ups, and that's because the SD card has a bunch of different partitions. All you have to do here is just cancel out of all of these windows. From there, you can eject the SD card, and then let's put it in the RG351P. So here I am with a 128 gig SD card. I'm going to speed up the loading process here, but basically it's going to resize the partition and then it's going to reboot the system and it'll load you into Lineage OS. Once you get into Lineage OS, it's going to ask you to set up everything, your date and time. You can set up your Wi-Fi and then choose whether or not to turn on location services, things like that. It'll take a few minutes to navigate through everything. But once that's done, it's going to ask you to select your launcher app. I'm going to use ATV launcher for this. I like the look of this one. And so here we are. This is what it's going to look like. You'll notice here there are no Google apps on here. So no Google Play Store, or anything else like that. This is very bare bones. One thing you might also notice is that there's no mouse mode on this version of the firmware. So if you want to use a pointer, you're going to have to use a USB keyboard and mouse. Luckily, I own one that does both. And so that's what I'm going to use here. So now using the mouse, you can get into some of the more finer tuned things within Android, shutting off your notifications, things like that. So let's try to load an app here first. We're going to load up the browser function, and then I'm going to go to a site called APK Mirror. Now this website will legally host a bunch of different APKs from the Google Play Store. So this is a very easy way to get a specific Android app without using the Google Play Store. But just be aware that all of the apps that are on APK Mirror are only the free ones. So you're not going to be able to grab like a paid app or anything else like that. These are all freely and legally distributed. So once you're in APK Mirror, let's search for an app here. I'm going to search for M64 Plus, which is my favorite Nintendo 64 emulator. You're going to have to navigate through a bunch of different pages, find the app itself, then click the download, and then say, yeah, I want to download it and do all this other stuff. Just follow all the prompts as you're going through it. Once you're done downloading the app, go into the File Explorer and then go into the Downloads folder, and you'll find the APK there. From there, just select it, and then it's going to ask you if you want to install it. Go ahead and hit Yes. And then once it's installed, you're good to go. You can actually just open it right then and there. And unfortunately, because it's Android 11, it's going to ask you constantly to give permission to access files. Luckily, you only have to do this once per app. Okay, now that we have an emulator on here, let's actually get some games on here. Let's do that next. I found the best way to do that is to use a flash drive. So I'm going to use this one here. First thing you want to do is you want to format the flash drive to FAT32. We're going to use an app here called GUI Format. And I'll have links to all this stuff in the written guide in the video description. So just follow these prompts to format your flash drive to FAT32. Okay, now we can get down to business. So we're going to go to APK Mirror on my computer. And I'm going to do that same process, but I'm going to download all the APKs directly onto the flash drive instead. 
it's a much faster process than trying to do it on the device itself. I would recommend as you're downloading each APK is to rename them so they're a little bit easier to identify. But yeah, I would say just grab any app that suits you, mostly emulators, maybe a couple streaming options. You can even go to RetroArch and download the APK directly. Okay, once you have all of your apps downloaded, let's go ahead and start adding some games. I'm gonna make a folder here and I'm gonna name it, well, games. And then from here, I'm just gonna pick some random systems and then move them over to the flash drive. In particular, I wanna test Nintendo 64 and PSP and Dreamcast. But I got a lot of space here, it's a 128 gig SD card. So now I'm gonna use another OTG port here to plug in this flash drive so I can access both the keyboard and mouse as well as my flash drive here. Now, unfortunately, this is where I ran into my first serious problem. For some reason, the File Explorer app would not identify my flash drive. So even though I knew I had it formatted to FAT32 and that I had files on it, this build of Lineage OS could not detect it on my RG351P. And I tried all sorts of different things. I tried different OTG adapters. And because mine was a USB 2.0 flash drive, I tried a USB 3.0 flash drive. Still no luck. I even tried downloading and installing a different file explorer to see if that was the problem, but that wasn't the problem either. And eventually I figured it out. It's a problem with my RD351P. I have an older model that has built-in Wi-Fi, and because of that, the team thinks that my USB ports are not as powered as they are on the RG351M and the RG351V. Because as soon as I did the same setup with the RG351M, everything worked perfectly. So in all likelihood, you're probably not going to run into this problem, because there are very few people like me who have the very first model of the RG351P. So I would say no matter what, you're probably safe, and this is just a weird thing that happened to me in particular. Either way, once I moved over to the RG351M, I was able to find my flash drive no problem, and so I started going through and installing all of these APKs. And this was a much faster process than when I was trying to download them directly onto the device. Unfortunately, RetroArch wouldn't install for some reason, but everything else installed perfectly. So here we are. Now we have a bunch of apps on the device. Let's try out some games here. So here I am running the Nintendo 64 emulator with the Nintendo 64 game still on that flash drive. And as you can see, it's running pretty slowly. Now there's a couple different factors to keep in mind. Number one, the read and write speeds on an SD card are not going to be as fast as internal storage. So already an SD card based Android is going to have an uphill battle. On top of that, I was a little bit concerned that hosting the files on the flash drive itself might cause additional slowdown. So because I have so much space in my SD card, I decided to move all the files from the flash drive onto the SD card itself. To do that, I opened up the File Explorer app, and then I selected that games folder that we made earlier, and then I went to copy all, and then moved it all over onto the SD card partition. Now moving over all these files took quite a long time, about 10 minutes altogether. But the nice thing is, once you're done, you don't have to use that flash drive anymore. And because I don't have to use the flash drive, I can go back to the RD351P. So to turn off the device, you just hold down power for a couple seconds, and then you select power off. So then I transferred the SD card over to my RD351P and then booted it up. And here we are. Now I have all the apps on the RD351P, as well as all of my files. So let's load up Nintendo 64 here. I'm going to navigate to my games folder here. And then I'm going to rescan all of my games since they're now moved over to the SD card instead of the flash drive. And here we are. So let's start up Mario Kart again and let's talk a little bit about gameplay performance. Now it does feel a little bit faster and it's hard to see the frames per second up there on the top, but I'm averaging about 25 to 35 frames per second. So at this point, probably the biggest negative that I discovered is that the audio is not working on any of these systems. And the team's aware of this issue and they're working through it right now. But it's kind of unfortunate because it's really hard to gauge how well something is running if you can't hear it at all. And even plugging in headphones didn't work. But I can tell you, at least from feel, that there is some slowdown with Nintendo 64. For example, F-Zero is definitely not playing at full speed. I would say it's playing at about 75% full speed right here. And that's kind of unfortunate, but at the same time, it's still pretty impressive that you do get this performance on Nintendo 64 without me doing any tweaks to the emulator at all. And same goes with PSP performance here. I'm using the PPSSPP emulator. I'm running an auto frame skip of one. And this performance is just about on par with any of the RG351 firmwares. And again, I haven't done any sort of hacks other than just turning on auto frame skip of one. So I think when it just comes down to gameplay performance, Nintendo 64 shows a little bit of promise and PSP is actually looking really good. Now, because we're on the Android side of things, I can actually use the Redream emulator for Dreamcast. And this is one of my favorite emulators for this system. 
Unfortunately, it's having some issues. For example, here you can see Dead or Alive 2 is just crawling at about 20 frames per second. On top of that, I was having all sorts of issues getting the buttons to work. Even though everything's properly mapped, in-game with Dead or Alive 2 at least, it wasn't working properly. I was able to get other games working, but not this one. Okay, let's look at our streaming options for a bit. We're going to try Parsec here, but you could also use something like Steam Link or AMD Link or Moonlight. Theoretically, all you have to do is connect to your computer, and then you should be able to stream your content directly. But as you can see here, it's not working with Parsec. And I think this is a good time to take a cat break. So if you haven't met her before, this is my cat Chicken, and somehow she always knows the right time to jump on my lap. Because at this point, I was getting a little frustrated with the firmware. To be fair, I'm not getting frustrated at the firmware itself or their performance, but just how cumbersome this process is compared to something like a Linux-based operating system like Arc OS or 351 Elec. It's definitely fun to tinker, especially when you get improved performance, but up until this point, at least on this beta build right here, I'm not yet seeing any improvements over the Linux operating systems. Either way, let's get back to work. So unfortunately, I couldn't get Stadia to work either. As you can see here, when I clicked on the Get Started thing, it just wouldn't work at all. And finally, the last thing I wanted to test was remote play for the Xbox. And this is just through the official Xbox app. And as you can see here, the menus are actually nice and zippy. This is me controlling my Xbox across the house. So I decided to load up some Halo, and all the title screens seemed to be working just fine. But unfortunately, when I tried to load a level, it just got stuck on the loading screen. I don't know if this is because the connection dropped, or my device couldn't handle it, I'm not really sure. So yeah, at the end of the day, this is Android on an RG351 device, and it's super impressive how far they've come in just the past couple months. There are definitely some glaring emissions for this operating system for now. For example, there is no sound, and transferring files over is kind of a pain. You have to use a flash drive to move everything over. But at the same time, there's a lot of promise here. Nintendo 64 played okay out of the box, and PSP performance was just as good as it is on any other RG351 firmware. And obviously the streaming options left a lot to be desired, but I'd be interested to see what kind of things people discover as they start testing this firmware. For example, how do standalone games work? Anyway, this is just a taste of what's to come regarding Android on the RG351 devices. I really hope the team keeps working at it, and I'm excited to see what other options we're going to have in the future. And that's the coolest thing about this operating system, is that it's all contained on one SD card. So all you have to do is flash this onto a new SD card, and if you don't like it, you can go back to your old one. Either way, 351 Droid is value added to the community because this operating system can work complementary to the other operating systems. It's just a matter of swapping out the SD cards. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this something you're going to try out on your own device? As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.